Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. Today, we are finishing the Mastiff. Finished, so that I can get it up in the workshop for you guys to play with as well. Uh, I've made a couple of minor changes, uh, obviously since the last build video, but you've seen a lot of them in the uh, in the last campaign episode. Um, what have I changed? I've sort of muddled this area up. Uh, the two main things that we're going to do this episode are put in the cram cannons on the sides for the broadside and install some Squirrel Hunter missiles here and I've already cleared out the area for the Squirrel Hunters and uh, sort of laid out the foundations for the other bits too. Now some minor changes I've made since the campaign. Um, Lloyd Carlton has been doing some interesting science for me on the cram cannons and has found that the fuses that I previously thought took up 25% of your payload, I was way off base. They are much, much more powerful than that. Um, the, this here, to, uh, total volume of selected fuses is 0.25. The volume of the shell is 18.11. So it's not 25%, it's only like 0.25 of this volume. So the bigger the shell is, the less penalty you have for using fuses. And that led me on to a particularly overpowered fuse that I dreamt up with the advanced cannons a while ago, but you couldn't really do it because of the limitations. Here we have a time from launch set to 30 seconds, just so that it doesn't explode before we wanted to. We have an inertial, just to add that little bit of extra utility at apparently very low cost because of this change. And I have a penetration depth now instead of a time from first impact. And the pen depth is set to like 12 meters, which is really quite high. Why do I have this set up? Well, I have added a laser targeter to each of these pen depth cannons. Now, what that does is, whenever the f uh, shell is fired, reverses to the target and the AI tells it exactly when to explode. The penetration depth component prevents it from exploding whenever it hits armor. So it goes as far as it absolutely can, and if it happens to bypass its target on the way, on the way there, it will detonate and blow the absolute snot out of the internals. So if you've got loads of kinetic damage, you can shoot halfway through a ship and then detonate right beside like the AI or the main ammo component or something like that. This makes this particular cannon absolutely, absurdly, stupidly powerful. Oh my word. It, uh, it can fire its shells right into the middle of a bulwark and just blow up. Yeah, nasty. Um, because of the inertial component, obviously, they're reasonably good against shields as well. And I did some testing against a perforator. No, it wasn't a perforator, it was a retribution, isn't it? The uh, the other big, big one, the expert version. Taliator, those guys, they are, <laughs> they are mean business. Jeez, they are scary. Uh, but what happened was during the combat, the nose got blown off, and we lost all these guns, and we lost the side guns, and we lost the rear guns, but... The centre of the hull, the cram cannon, took absolutely ages to get taken out because all of the um, these uh, props on the bottom kept it up in the water and it's so well armoured, there's like four layers of armour on the outside and then there's extra armour on the cannon itself, so this thing is so super super tough and that's great because that means that our main weapon is going to last for absolutely as long as possible, it's the last thing to go down in a con in combat so it can continue to do damage the whole way through. So I'm really happy with that. Now the plan for this episode is I'm going to do these bits quickly and we're going to speedy them up. The squirrel missile I'll do first because it's nice and easy and the cram cannons on the sides. I'm I'm not going to do anything flashy with them. I'm going to keep them really simple. Uh, I've already put in a, a splitter here to keep things separate. These guys are going to be basically two 3x3 three three cannons. Really simple design. I'm not going for high efficiency or any sort of squirrely builds or anything like that. Uh, and just do the same in here. I think we'll go to 1500mm um, here and we'll see just how many gauges we can cram into this one as well. Um, so, I'm going to cut here, get ready to build a couple of bits and pieces for you and uh, we'll get the squirrel hunters built first. So, I'll be right back. I 
Okay, so there we have our little Squirrel Hunter missile setup. I'm arguing whether I should put ejectors on. I think I should. Should I put ejectors? It's got a one turn, so the ejectors actually help it to um, to do stuff and things and stuff. Uh, it helps them turn a bit faster towards their target on the initial launch because fins work better at high speed. So uh, let us just fill in the gaps here, I think, with wood, just to have a little bit of extra protection. It it really doesn't matter that much because this whole section is so terribly explosive. Um, if, if any of it goes up, the whole bloody lot goes up anyway. So these are kind of like sort of just contingency missiles, if, if anything. Uh, they're for a little bit of extra DPS. I was initially worried that we were running a little bit low on ammo, but uh, it's actually it, it's performing very well where ammo's concerned. We're we're keeping up with our uh, our output quite well. Uh, next, I am going to do the cram cannons. I think so. Let's just sort of pull straight into it, I guess, and uh, yeah, let's just start here. Yeah, and of course dumbass here forgot to put a local weapon controller in. That is going to be tricky to fit in here somewhere. Uh, I guess I'm just going to have to lose some off the cannon. Uh, that's a shame. Where, we, where can we squeeze it? Can we squeeze it in here? No. 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 Well, I guess I could move this back one. You'll connect there, and then I can put the local weapon controller here, right? Ugh, this is a bit of a mess now. Okay, we'll fix it. We'll fix it. Oh man, what have I done? I broke the world. Crapple. There. Fixed. Um, and then I can put the local weapon controller here. Uh, it doesn't need a fail safe, but it does need a wireless receiver. Go there. Uh, it's gonna have to have its own AI, I think, for these guys. And I'll pop another loader in here. And we can finish it off like that. I'm not too worried if these guys are balanced or anything like that, as long as it works, you know? And I'm gonna have to do the same for this guy. So. Yeah, you see that mess of construction. I'm sure that wasn't the most pleasant thing to watch, but um, it, it's very fiddly building inside such a small area. So rather than doing the other one on camera, I'm going to uh, cut here and carry on and build the other one off camera quickly uh, and get the, the local weapon controller installed on this guy the same as I have it here. So uh, I will be right back, and by the time we come back, I should have eight lovely broadside cannons. So see you in a second. Okay, so about 45 minutes have passed. Um, <laughs> I put the cannons in, that only took a couple of minutes, but I went around and did a sort of a last pass optimization to all of the little bits and pieces. I went around all the local weapon controllers, uh, fiddled about some of the AIs. Um, these guys here, these, this whole band of weapons are on the same AI now. They're all on AI4, or <laughs> wireless 4, and they all have a target prioritization set. Uh, they've also got local weapon controllers set to uh, limit the range and stuff so they don't waste too much ammo. Uh, except for those, actually I do need to set the local weapon controllers on these still. 
Um, I'll, I'll do that off camera though, uh, just so that they don't shoot at things that are way too far away. Um, all the cram cannons are now on the same AI. Uh, they're also prioritized to target slower vehicles, so they're more likely to hit. Um, these guys here I forgot to mention, I actually changed up the shell that these are using. Because they're not terribly high DPS or anything like that, I decided, eh, screw it, let's throw some Graviton Rams in. Um, it's actually proved to be quite effective against things like hakes and stuff, because if they land a hit they just go pew and that nosedive into the water. Quite funny. Um, not hugely effective, but I kind of like them there. Uh, it's a nice mix of the weapons as well, that means I don't have two AP guns working on the same sort of uh, demographic of targets, so to speak. Um, these uh, front cannons, I think, are on the same AI as these ones here. The torpedoes on the bottom, uh, I also removed the f a lot of the fail safes. Uh, some, a couple of people have actually suggested, you know, that you don't actually need fail safes on fixed weapons, which is a fair point. I always add them out of force of habit. But I have removed all the fail safes on the torpedoes, on uh, what else? Blast, I just realized I removed the, the fail safes on these. I don't want to remove the fail safes on these, for goodness sake. I'm going to have to put them back on again. <laughs> that was a bit derpy. Um, but yeah, the everything is sort of streamlined a little bit and maybe not fixed, but, you know, uh, working. Working, as intended. Um, I think it's nearly time after I do those couple of little... Uh, fixes off camera that I just realized I, uh, mistakes that I made. Uh, it is time to do some combat testing. I haven't fired either, any of these cannons yet. We ended up with, bigger these, these are uh, about 1500 and I think these are about 1690 or something like that, 1673 and I didn't go mad with the efficiency or anything like that. I just made, uh, made these cannons and these cannons the same, nothing, nothing terribly exciting. Um, also, something I added as well is this is a little bit of pitch control for um, just to keep the thing steady in the water. I noticed the nose was dipping down a little bit or dipping up a little bit. So I've got a hydrofoil set here so that the pitch angle goes below negative one. So if the nose goes down by any more than one degree, it'll try and pitch up. And if we have this one here is set, if it goes above two degrees, then it will pitch them down again and try and get the nose back into the water. So yeah, that uh, not only adds a little bit of wobble, uh, pitch oscillation, as well as the vertical oscillation we have from the PID controller down here, uh, it, it just helps keep the thing stable and adds, you know, tries to ensure that these don't go into the water too much. Another change I made was the PID is now set to a higher or a lower value. Uh, incidentally, there was a patch and the patch has slightly changed some of the buoyancy values. So. This thing is actually a lot more floaty than it used to be. And this PID is actually in reverse now. It's pulling it into the water as opposed to out of the water. Now that means that I could adjust my buoyancy by using the air pumps, but one added benefit of having this PID is it works both ways. It tries to attain this altitude whether it has not enough flotation or if it has too much. So it's kind of like a an anti-sinking mechanism. If we take too much damage that we start to sink, these uh, props will just reverse and push the thing back upwards. So it, it's uh, it's a good way to keep things you know steady. It's also mounted just above the main or below the main cannon. So like I was saying earlier, because it's the bit that lasts the longest, having the props here is really useful. It keeps them up, stops it from sinking, stops it from despawning. So uh, what did I say I was gonna fix? Oh yeah, uh, I'm going to do that quickly off camera, and I will be right back. In fact, no. Let's just go straight to the montage. Let's go blow stuff up. I'm going to put this guy up in the workshop, so everyone can go and have, have their fun with him, and <laughs> make some use with these beautiful, beautiful creme cannons. Oh, God, so much fun. Um, yeah, this has been a long, long haul. Uh, we've had a lot of episodes building this guy. Um, but we're there in the end, and I think we've got a finished product that has uh, is really going to help us along in our campaign. I think this build has taken me about 22 hours now altogether. So, uh, yeah, I really hope you just enjoy it. <laughs> it's been a hell of a lot of work, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, th I think it's been worth it. I think. These things kind of look like oars now. All. <laughs> anyway, I do hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the build as a whole, and, uh, you know, um... Hopefully we'll have maybe some more like this in the future. We're going to be building something else fairly soon. But anyway, uh, enjoy the upcoming montage. 
Any likes, subs or comments are really, really awesome. I do love hearing from you guys and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.